people don't think they can't do without and don't care to pay for. Because we have always been the prize, we have been under siege for over 3,000 years. Nothing that ever brought into Africa from the outside was meant to do the Africa any good. That means all the other religions. Islam was the handmaiden of Arab imperialism. Christianity was the handmaiden of European imperialism. The Hebrew faith was the handmaiden of a concept called the chosen people. Now, if God is kind and God is merciful and God has no stepchildren, he won't choose one over the other. And to say he chose some people, you're making him a bigot. And to say that he endorsed enslavement of one people over the other, you're making him an assessment to murder. The Arabs used Islam to rationalize their slavery and their imperialism. The Europeans used Christianity to rationalize their slavery and imperialism. Who are you kidding about friends in the world? Damn it, if you want a friend, look in the mirror. Peace and power, flam family. Um, that was uh, Dr. John Hendrick Cluck on his speech, You Have No Friends. It's very relative to um, this discussion. How Gaddafi used Pan African, the Pan African banner to advance Pan Arabization. Uh, so, for those that missed the speech, or if it wasn't clear enough, so what Dr. John Henry Clark was explaining in the in the conversation or in the speech was how nothing that came from outside of Africa brought into Africa was meant to do Africa any good. Uh, that includes the people that came from outside of Africa and have come into Africa. None of them have brought anything good to Africa. So we are going to deal with the delusion which has been spread by mainly by uh, black politicians about how Gaddafi was about to save Africa and unite Africa and make Africa um, lib what liberate Africa from the Europeans. I think that part um, about Gaddafi wanting to liberate Africa from the from the Europeans was partly true but what 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 is the reason the reason why he wanted to liberate africa is is a whole different reason from what <clears throat> the africans that that sing his praises the the reason is for a totally different uh, purpose uh, because it's basically what gaddafi was doing was similar to um, if you find someone who has been captured and enslaved and then you you go and buy that person from the person that enslaved them, uh, it could be so that you could be the person's uh, new slave master, you know. So there are different reasons why. So many people have, have tried to explain how Gaddafi was going to unite Africa. Oh, and then the white man stopped it, you know. But they never really talk about the history of uh, Gaddafi. Uh, his history in terms of how he started out as a politician, what his purpose was, and, and also his identity, how it comes into play in, in the whole thing of Pan-Africanism. So, uh, just the basic background... Gaddafi actually started with a, a passion that he had for uniting Arabs, uh, pan-Arabization. The movement failed uh, because uh, Arabs basically failed to unite just as Africans are struggling to come together and unite. And 
So what he did was he, he actually saw that he can actually get a better results uh, by, by claiming to, to, uh, to bang for pan-Africanism. And I'm going to explain why. But before I do that, I'd like to, I'd like to go into <laughs> one of the tweets that, that explain why, why Gaddafi should be, should be the most uh, respected pan-African, the uh, so-called pan-African. So uh, this is a page from, uh, it's one of the people that I actually invited to this discussion so they could uh, bring their, you know, their outlook and so they can answer the questions. Because the problem is when we are discussing on Twitter and everyone's typing, uh, people can, can easily um, ignore questions and just keep on typing, you know. But you can't do that on a, on a live space like this. It, it's going to be very evident that you are deflecting. So this person actually created a whole thread. I'll just go through a little bit of the thread. And it starts with, for those who keep asking, why are you pro-Gaddafi even though you are a black man? And then it says, I have answers to your question. The first one is uh, Colonel uh, Muammar Gaddafi loved black people so much. He was the first and the only leader from the Arab world who has ever formally apologized to black people for the involvement of the Arabs in the Holocaust and the transatlantic enslavement of black people. So <clears throat> the first point is basically useless. Um, <laughs> Africans don't need an apology. Apology is not gonna liberate Africa. Uh, we we are we are not we are not um, looking for hugs and kisses <laughs> uh, or anything like that. Or we're looking for what affection, you know, apology and all that stuff. People can keep it for 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 their lovers, you know, your boyfriends and girlfriends and husbands and wives and all that you know uh, we don't need an apology and when we look at other nations um, that have uh, that, that have been, that have had bad history with Europeans and to repair the, the damages people call it reparations not apology we need reparations what are reparations it means you need to look at the state in which we were before you came in and destroyed our state of, of prosperity, then provide the means to restore us back to that. That is, that's the only thing uh, we are interested in, in listening to when it comes to outsiders. So we are not saying we, can't, we, need, uh, uh, we can't do anything about that ourselves if they don't come through. But what we are saying is if they claim to uh, bang for pan-Africanism. The only thing we want to hear is reparations. So, uh, for those who might not know, I think most people know, Arabs were the first settlers and the first colonizers and the first enslavers uh, in, in, in Africa prior to the Europeans. In fact, the Arabs are the ones that uh, introduced uh, the slave trade to the Europeans. And for those that live uh, in South Africa, there's a, a word which the Europeans used as a slur uh, against black people. Uh, it's a word that if, if a well-known well white politi uh, a, a politician or a public figure, if they use it, it's gonna be, there's going to be an uproar. You know? and, the, and the word is kafir, the K word. And anyone, if you do a background check to that word, that word is neither of Dutch origin or British origin. But the people that were using this word against our, our parents uh, during the times of apartheid were European. And the word has no European origin. This word is actually Arabic. 
So this tells you how, where the Europeans carried, got their blueprint of how to ill treat and mistreat black people. They got it from the Arabs. They found the Arabs. The Arabs had already given us the word. They had already um, laid out the foundation of how you should uh, treat uh, Africans. Europeans did not invent anything about racism. And in fact, without really going too deep into, um, into, into the whole thing of racism, the, the oldest, before Europeans were... <laughs> Uh, where we ever had an idea or it, it even knew that there are Africans or there are other people living within the planet, uh, the oldest, I mean, the, the, the oldest document that has uh, a racist um, statements against uh, African people is the, the Babylonian Tumult, the Tumult. So that document is the oldest documented statement of racism or, or uh, where uh, black people's features are used in a derogatory manner. So, and, and if you really look into the whole uh, thing of racism, even Indians uh, laid the foundation long before Europeans. So the Arabs, the Aryan people from the East, uh, they had practiced um, racism against African people. So Europeans came after the Arabs and the, the Europeans did not introduce anything new um, <laughs> to, to the whole thing of enslavement. Probably the only thing that they had introduced was how to segregate the offspring of what they call uh, so-called concubine. Because what the Arabs would do is when they invade when when they um they subdued a an african people they would take the african women and would have offspring with these women and the children would become bastards and so they did not have a system of of creating a, a an intermediary race so that that bastard uh, would identify as an Arab at the end of the day. Uh, that's why you still have people living in East Africa, black people who, who call themselves Arabs today. So that, that might be, but those are little differences. So the Arabs, uh, the system they had employed of segregation of class in terms of between black people, and uh, it's similar to what you find in, 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 the, in the Latin American world, because the Spanish people, when they uh, enslaved Africans, they did not do it like the Americans, where they said if a drop of black is black. And, and in South Africa, there was a, a different system where a, a, a child who was of African and European origin would then be classified as a whole different race between the two. So there will be a, an intermediary race uh, in South Africa. It was called colored. So the, the Arabs did not employ that. The Arabs only had Africans and Arabs. And if your, your father was, was Arabic, your mother was a concubine, the difference is you, you would uh, be of lower class within, but you'd still be identified as an Arab. But because your mother comes from a, a lower, so-called mm, lower race, you'd, not, you'd be considered a bastard. So obviously... Uh, Arabs, many Arabs have African blood because many of them um, have that African blood through the whole system of concubine. So, and the concubine would not have an inheritance and all that. So that that's basically the only difference. And um, the Arabs began slavery. Uh, the Europeans joined them in the middle. The Arabs did not stop. They still continued the, the European world, eventually banished it. Um, and in 2021, we still have Arabs are still enslaving African people. But for some reason, uh, we have the so-called woke movement, uh, where people are out there praising Gaddafi and saying, uh, this man 
wanted to do this for Africa and all these things, you know. But he actually never did anything. <laughs> and I'll, I'll, so, so before I continue, I just want to look, uh, go to the next uh, claim about what Gaddafi did for African people. And the next one is, it says, uh, Colonel Mama Gaddafi wrote in his green book published in 1975 that the black people will rule the world and prevail at all levels. So, okay. But, so the person that wrote this also forgot that in the same green book, Mama Gaddafi wrote, the population of other races has decreased because of birth control, restrictions in marriage, and constant occupation in work. Unlike the blacks, who tend to be less obsessive about work in a climate which is continuously hot. So, uh, Mahmoud Gaddafi in his Green Book, which uh, this pro-Gaddafi person is trying to say the Green Book, he said, we're going to rule the world. Do we need, is that a contribution to, to, to is that a contribution? It's not. Him saying that Africans are going to rule the world, that's a given. Uh, because history shows that we have ruled the world. And this, even though currently uh, the, the, the people that are running the world, uh, they, are using, they are using the African blueprint anyway. So uh, him saying that Africans are going to rule the world, now we, we should call him the, the savior of, of, of Africa. Mm. That doesn't make sense. All right. So, and then the the next thing the person said was, Colonel Mama Gaddafi stood by South Africans financially and militarily during the fight against apartheid regime, when apartheid ended, he visited South Africa to pay condolences to the families of the victims and the survivors of the brutal apartheid regime. That is also a, a nothing at the end of the day. Why? Um, Russia, Gaddafi, in, in fact, when we look at uh, the contribution of people to the, the, the struggle against apartheid in South Africa, there are many contributors and Gaddafi is not at the top. Uh, Russians actually beat him. We are more indebted to the Russians who actually trained the, the military arm uh, called Umkonto Sizu, which was uh, the guerrilla liberation army, which was the basis for the negotiation at the end of the day. So, um, so if, if, if we go by, by that logic, then, hey, the Russians are our brothers. <laughs> the Russians, you know, like, come on. All right, um, then the next one, Gaddafi offered to su uh, support of millions of dollars to black America, uh, or blacks in America in 1985 through Minister Louis Farrakhan. He also stated in, in the following thread that blah, 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 blah. Okay. Again, talking about offering money. Africa doesn't need handouts. We don't, he gave black Americans money well. So, um, again, if we look at people that have given money to Africa, Europeans, they top the list. <laughs> if you put all the European aid that uh, they are bringing into Africa or they have brought into Africa over the years, Gaddafi's contributions to black people in terms of his donations are meaningless. So we should be more grateful to the Europeans then. By that logic, no, uh, we are not going to be grateful to the Europeans because the aid they were giving is basically uh, 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 giving back a small portion of what they stole, you know? And why is Gaddafi even in a position uh, to, 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 to give donations to, 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 to Africans. Why? Historical. He has a privilege to be able to do that because he is sitting on stolen land. He's sitting on stolen 
wealth. That's basically it. Arabs in Africa, uh, in, if you look throughout all the North African states, uh, Arabs are, have the upper hand, they have the power. Uh, if Gaddafi really was about empowerment, the first thing he should have done, and people will tell you, I built houses for people, wada, wada, wada. I don't care what he did for poor people in, in, in Libya. Why are they poor in the first place? Those people in Libya are poor because of the, the, the Arab colonialism. Africa is poor because of colonialism. Africa was rich. So someone being grateful, and, and by the way, building houses for poor people. The apartheid government, the apartheid regime built houses. If you go to the townships in South Africa, you will find these that we call ama forum, the forum, four-roomed houses. Those houses are, are of a higher quality than the RDP houses, which the modern government is building for people. And those ones were built by people that hated us, they were brutalizing us and killing us. And you go to the townships, those houses are still of a much better quality and the people own them. They own them. They got, yeah, they didn't have to pay bonds and all that for them. So, yeah, uh, I mean, for me to be grateful to Gaddafi for building houses or Europeans for building houses for anyone, it's an insult because it's basically like you stealing a whole a bunch of hectares of land from my ancestors and then you come back and you build you build me a house in a small section there. And I must be grateful. No. Give back the land. That's that's what reparations is. That's what that's it's it's not deep. That's what reparations are give back what you stole you know don't steal my car and then you say well i'm gonna still give you a ride that's what people are saying we should be grateful to Gaddafi for, for giving us a ride in his car in the car that he stole from us man get out of here so <laughs> all right the next one uh colonel Muhammad Gaddafi often wears the outline of africa on his robe because of his unconditional love and loyalty to Africa. As you guys can see, they, this person is still not giving anything substantial. He's telling us about t-shirts that Gaddafi wears. And in South Africa, we have the most uh, in, uh, uh, European imperialist uh, woman called Helen Zill. I have a I have a picture, people have seen a picture of her that says I am an African. We are not impressed with that. We don't want you to wear uh, a t-shirt with Africa because it represents, for you, it doesn't represent the same thing as me wearing a t-shirt of Africa. When I wear a t-shirt of Africa, I'm, I'm, I'm illustrating my roots and the, the beginning of my ancestors. You, uh, as, a, as a settler, wearing it, you are representing a whole different thing. It represents your conquest. I have conquered the land, you know. So, yeah, we should be grateful because Gaddafi is wearing his T-shirt. Wow. Okay. My uh, Colonel Mama Gaddafi saved Africans from paying over $500 million annually to EU for by putting up the first African satellite, making sure that Africans can make cheap calls and have access to telecommunication satellites. Again, handouts. If you go and look at the company that uh, Mama Gaddafi, uh, the, 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 I think it's Stratcom, if I'm not mistaken. So, again, the question it's about him putting up infrastructure. Europeans uh, did that first, you know, come to South Africa. So, if we are to, to be grateful, I mean, uh, the, 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 the point that I'm emphasizing here is uh, we cannot exempt, we cannot be biased about principles. We must use uh, principles and not, if we're going to celebrate Mama Gaddafi for putting up infrastructure in Africa, first, long before he did, we should be grateful to these uh, Europeans for putting up uh, infrastructure. They've done more work in terms of putting up infrastructure in Africa. Uh, go to Cape Town, it's beautiful. 
you see the bridges and the roads and uh, come to Johannesburg, wherever, you know. So we're supposed to be grateful to, to Gaddafi because he, he put up a satellite. <laughs> That's a joke. I mean, Europeans have done more. So uh, I guess we should be celebrating Europeans. I don't think so, you know. So all I'm saying is if you're going to do it on the right, do it on the left. Be balanced. It's called ma'at. You know, you cannot uh, uh, apply different rules to different people. You know, you must, we go by the principle. You know, we, when we say we don't like Europeans, we, it's not because of how they look. We hate their ways of doing things. We hate their ways. We also hate equally the ways of, of Arabs, and Arabs are the mentors of Europeans anyway. So it's re it really um, beats me why Africans think uh, they can exempt the Arabs from being, being treated as settlers, as the settlers they are. In fact, Europeans are much of a less threat. Uh, when we look at African history, you don't find Europeans uh, really occupying a space and saying this is our history. No. So they're not really a threat that much. Who's really occupying certain areas in, in, in Africa and trying to portray it like their history? Europeans cannot do that. It's impossible because it's like a joke. They can do it in movies, but everybody knows it's a joke. But hey, walk around uh, Africa and ask and talk about Egypt and the pharaohs and uh, our people who have been uh, have not been uh, given the, the historical background actually associate pharaohs with Arabs. And the Arabs are the ones who really are working hard to, to keep that heritage. So North Africa, like one of my, uh, the brothers that I, uh, uh, um, you know that that I break bread with here on Twitter. He, I like the the, the term that he uses. He says, "The whole of North North Africa is a crime scene," and that's a fact. That's a fact. Um, and 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 many of us who live in 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 in, in the part of Africa that is uh, above the Sahara, because we are not below geographically. We are above the Sahara. The Nile flows from Central Africa to flows northward. So because we are in the highlands. So one of the things we take for granted or we are not aware of is how much our brothers and sisters suffer in in the Arab world. We don't really get to see the preview. Many people could see what is happening in South Africa during apartheid and they could sympathize with us and everything. But the difference is in the Arab world, it's all concealed. You never get to see it in the news anywhere. Um, when I found out about this, the slavery in Mauritania, like currently, like a person that whose grandfather was still where was slaves, and, and this guy was is a is a is an activist. We're talking about this generation. The guy is probably I'm not sure if he's even fifty or probably not even 60 years yet. He was sentenced to death for his activism work against slavery in the 21st century. Imagine that. And yet Arabs are supposed to be the lesser of two evils. I don't think so. If you really look at the history, they are the lesser of two of these two evils, Arab imperialism and European imperialism. It's European imperialism is actually the lesser of two evils. But I guess the the people that that control the whole narrative about the the African liberation movement is black politicians and black politicians are not spokespeople of they're not uh, spokesmen and women of the people they move according to how the money moves you know they they make deals and all and so on and so on and. And, and, and all of them have agreed that they're not going to say anything about the, the Arab imperialism and slavery that is still continuing today. That's why the AU is quiet about it. 
That's why every president in Africa says nothing about it. You know, uh, they will, everybody is happy when you talk against the European imperialist, but not the Arab imperialist. All right, so, and then the next one says, uh, okay, Gaddafi finance, construction of schools, hostels, blah, blah, blah. It's the same answer I would give. Colonel Mama Gaddafi was the only African leader who demanded during UN summit that the colonialists must pay reparations, compensations of about 707, uh, $777 trillion US dollars to their ex colonies in Africa so as to prevent such colonies from happening again wow how rich of him what if how in fact in that statement he did not count himself as a colonialist he was talking about European European colonialists they must pay reparations question is how much reparations did Gaddafi pay you know so you can see that this guy understood how Africans think and he had his boys in his pockets and everything and to push the narrative because if he comes out and he says yeah the Europeans must pay then Africans would get all sensational and, and celebrate <laughs> so you can get them in their team you know, in his team because remember uh, Gaddafi was not out there trying to serve Africa. He wanted to get Africa behind him for his purpose. That's not deep at all. So basically, his, his whole purpose at the end of the day was initially he wanted to unite Arabs. Why did he want to unite Arabs? Obviously, to be able to stand against European imperialism. It's competition. We were here first as Arabs. We came here first, but you guys are running the show. So Arabs obviously have, have beef with that because they're the ones who introduced them to the game and the Europeans beat them at it. So they still have beef. So Gaddafi said, as Arabs, let's unite so we can tackle European forces. And it failed. And Gaddafi had a different plan. He was the smartest among them. Uh, those who didn't understand what he was trying to do, they hated him. And people would say, oh, they hated him because he, he was all for Africa. No. F.W. de Klerk, for the last president of the apartheid government, was hated by the white, P, uh, the white community in South Africa. Only because they did not understand what he was doing. They saw him holding hands with Nelson Mandela. And they hated him. Uh, he was negotiating with these black people, you know, they did not understand that he was, what he was doing was the greatest thing that any white person could have ever done for them. Because the Africaners are not very uh, strategic people. You know? they, they, uh, they are, their minds are very, <laughs> they, 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 they think in terms of force. If you see a target charged toward, towards them, you know, they're not, strategic like the British you know when when for example when when the Dutch were fighting uh, Skukune they they were using force and they failed and the British came and said hmm, that's not how you do it use force you gather local people let the blacks fight each other and then we take the victory simple so so um, FW Declerc was hated by white people it doesn't mean he was a good person Yes, if you if you go you rewind back to 1994, our parents actually thought he was a good guy <laughs> because they did not understand the science behind what he was doing. Because what he did, it secured the p white power in South Africa. You know, so it's not different. Gaddafi was doing the same thing, and the Arabs that did not understand what he was trying to do hated him. So Gaddafi realized, okay. Uh, he who rules Africa rules the world. Who's ruling Africa? Uh, the white man. But that's not fair because we were here first and we introduced them to the game. So, since I can't unite my people, I failed, uh, we'll do a different thing. We'll, 
do what we've been doing in our countries and forcing in our countries, but we're going to sell it to the other guys because we can't enforce it since we do not have authority in these territories. Because in the Arab countries, in the Arab world, um, for you to really excel, you, you need to abandon your culture. You need to follow, you need to have the Arab identity. You know, you need to uh, speak Arabic and claim allegiance to to being Arabic and, 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 and forsake all these, uh, what they call uh, kafir infidel culture or, the, the, or African voodoo stuff, as they will call it. So we see within... Um, the country there, we see a group of people that are have not really embraced. You will always find it throughout Africa. The majority will embrace the colonial recruit, you know, for a better life. And then there are those who resist. And those who resist are uh, usually punished. Uh, we can look all over. The Dogon people had to flee to the mountains because to escape Islam and pan-Arabization. And so when you go into, that's why, I mean, if you watch the Arab TV, where do you see, uh, it's almost like uh, our people actually they would, in, in our imagination, would think black people in North Africa do not have an indigenous culture like we practice, like, you see, if you if you if you switch on South African TV, you can see all this traditional stuff. You can see some Roma talking on TV, uh, uh, or even you know about Credo Mutua. You know, it doesn't mean there's no Credo Mutua in North Africa. They are there, but they have no voice because Arab television does not entertain that, and these people are not given. So, black people that would find nice positions in, in Gaddafi's regime are obviously those who comply to the whole Arab culture. They conform to it. You know. So, uh, in fact, um, in, during the, in South Africa, during the apartheid government, we could watch television in our own indigenous languages. Even though it was not all of them, there were at least three or four uh, of the indigenous languages where television programming was. Uh, you could watch news in Isizulu, Iskosa, and other languages, you know? That you cannot find in the Arab world until today. And, and because of that, a, an African coming from the South would probably think these people don't speak any other language but Arabic. I mean, that alone should tell you something is wrong. We know that these people do not only speak Arabic. There are indigenous languages that they speak. And obviously you will find that um, a situation where many of them will not be able to even speak their own languages because it's discouraged, it's not encouraged, and you cannot really do it in school. During the apartheid, uh, during apartheid in South Africa, we went to our schools and we learned in our own languages. I don't, you cannot find that in Gaddafi's Libya. And people were saying, yeah, he was great. For me, for you to be great, you need to restore the sovereignty of the people. You know? And he did nothing for that. And we've heard stories, which uh, obviously the pro-Gaddafi people are trying to dispute about the table people being oppressed and being uh, stripped of their citizenship. Uh because they resisted Arabization. Uh, that one, we're not, we don't even need to present it as proof unless there's a table person that can present their case and will accept it because they're speaking firsthand. We know about the story. We, and obviously those pro-Gaddafi uh, people try and say, yeah, those stories are lies. They are spread by the Western media. So for me then... Uh, we don't even need the stories to be true to find Gaddafi guilty. It's more about where do we see indigenous Libyan languages on on Libyan television, on Arab television. It's not there, you know. So that's the thing. But 
the whole world during apartheid could see they knew how the Zulu people danced. You know, the Europeans op uh, oppressed us, but they still gave us a little bit of that liberty. You do not find that in the Arab world. You know, they they want truly enforce uh, their culture through Islam. You know. So so we could even go continue on this thread. You um, there is basically nothing that he. That this person mentioned is mentioned that is uh, that is of any value to African uh, liberation. I'll give uh, I'll continue to the next one. It says Colonel Mama Gaddafi proposed that African countries should be should have a single currency. He proposed African currency project backed by African gold. Uh, that's one of the reasons why his regime was overthrown by the Western imperialists. So what if the Western imperialists overthrew him? They, they had their own reasons. Obviously, what he was trying to do threaten Western imperialism because he wanted to dethrone. Because here's the thing. As soon as, you see, what's a given here? Here's what's a given. If, imperial, if, West, if the Western world just falls without anybody doing anything, guess who's going to rule Africa? It's the Arabs. The Arabs will then have a breathing ground to be able to penetrate the rest of Africa. That's what they want, have always wanted to do. So, one currency, common sense. Where has a common currency ever united anybody? Look in South Africa, we, the so called rainbow nation, with all the different races. We all use one currency. Has it united us? One currency couldn't even unite the. the, the, the uh, the Eurozone, you know, <laughs> many of them started leaving the whole thing. <laughs> it's pathetic to even think that a currency can unite people. Money does not unite people. What unites people is a culture. Cultural unity is the only thing that is the reality. And there's nothing that unites Arabs and Africans culturally. In fact, if anything, our cultures uh cannot coexist they cannot because you cannot be uh burning your impaired poem calling upon your ancestors next to an arab you kill you say you infidel you know so seriously it's ridiculous to even think that one I, we don't even need to go deep into currency can never and if we really anybody that understands um economics Setting up a central bank empowers the one who owns the central bank. It doesn't empower the, the, the people that will receive the money from there. So basically what Gaddafi was going to, this is economics. Go and look anywhere where people have set up a central bank. It has never empowered the people. In fact, central banks are the biggest problem in all economic systems because they, they manipulate, they manipulate the, the market. You can never have a free market. Uh, there's no free market in the Western world. They've got central banks and they control the money supply. So if you control the money supply, you control everything. And there's nothing uh, organic about it. It's not the people, it's not the market that decides prices and, and things like that. So uh, Gaddafi forming a currency would mean he'd be the central bank, which means he'd be king. Just as there is a video on YouTube of a few uh, Kenyan leaders who uh, did a ceremony where they crowned Gaddafi as the king of Africa. And he gladly accepted. Wow. Why would, if, if truly you are there to serve a people, why would you want to be crowned as their king? Seriously. I mean, at least you could have pretended like, no, I don't want to. I mean, if we just go to the Bible, uh, and look at Bible mythology. There's a there's a time uh, where a crowd wanted to crowd Jesus, and he ran away. <laughs> Why? It's a principle. It shows that this person is not power hungry. If you accept things like that, it shows that you are actually here for power. You know, uh, when people bow before you, you know. Uh, also in biblical mythology, you see in the Book of Revelations, uh, John. Uh, bowing before the angel, the angel says, do not bow to me. I am just a servant like yourself. 
freaking hell. Why couldn't, I mean, if Gaddafi could at least have pretended like, hey, I'm here to serve, we are brothers. Why would, why would he want to be crowned as king of Africa and ex even accept that? You know, anybody just seeing that, that's just a red flag. The guy actually, it, it boosted his ego. That's exactly what he wanted to do. But he did not, uh, when I follow his passion from the, begi from the, the, the beginning of his career, uh, what, having he had a great passion for, for uniting Arabs, which I admire him for. You know, I admire Gaddafi. Why? Because he had a passion to unite his people and he would do anything, even if it included, included uh, getting all these gullible Africans to back it up. That's, what I, that's the only thing we should envy or praise about Gaddafi is the love for his people. And he would do anything, even if it means hugging a few black people and and giving the money and supporting that over there, bomb that one over there, you know, just get a few allies. That's how you get allies. Simple. I mean, it's not deep. So, uh, so come on, let's uh, go to the next one. Currency, that one is ridiculous. Um, Colonel Gaddafi started in stated in 2009 when he was the chairman of African Union uh, when he said I shall continue to insist that our sovereign countries work to achieve the United States of Africa with a single military force, a single currency and a single passport for Africans to move freely around the continent. Bam! Oh, it's a big deal. Uh, guess what? The British Empire had implemented that. In, in South Africa, if you, they, in the streets, there's still a slang called, uh, if, if you have, uh, if someone asks you for two rand, they say, uh, give me a, a pound, a pound. The word pound comes from the word pound. So in South Africa, we were under the Commonwealth of the British Empire. They united, the British Empire united many African and countries that were outside of Africa. They united them under the British banner. And we all use the British currency called the pound. And, and, and the legacy still stays. If, you, if, you, if you're if you not South African and you, you, you walk around, just say to someone, give me pondo. You know, they'll laugh, give me two rand. Because well, it became two rand due to, to the currency exchange then. Uh, one, the pound, one pound was two rand. So we used, it, we were part of. So what Gaddafi was trying to do, the British had already done. And so, yay, many Africans used to celebrate being part of the British Commonwealth. Hey, does it mean anything? Come on, it means nothing. Um, that would not empower, it would serve. His, his purpose, which was to give uh, access to Arab to 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 Africa. When Arabs accessed Africa, it would have been easy because we do not even have uh, any system to even challenge any form of Arab imperialism in Africa. We don't. The only thing that is saving Africa from Arab imperialism is the Europeans that still occupy. That's the only thing. And for me. I'd rather be under these uh, Europeans than freaking Arabs. Arab, go to Arab countries and you'll see as rough, you know, how black people get treated in that country. You know. So I do not choose either. I do not choose Arab or European. And I certainly, if I were to choose, uh, I, I don't think I want to switch from European imperialism to Arab imperialism. No. You want freedom or nothing? What, freedom or death? So, no thank you. We don't want a, a one currency from Gaddafi. Gaddafi entrusted his life to black people amongst the most prominent of all his all-female revolutionary, revolutionary guards. The Amazonian guards is a black woman who was the chief of the security details. Blacks employed, uh, played major roles throughout the Jamahiria government. Again, it's a ridiculous thing. Um, he entrusted them with security 
which which colonial person has never entrusted black people? Um, first of all, Arab imperialism in Africa. The military arm or the force, the military force that was used to take North Africa was actually black people. <laughs> you know, so hey, uh, black people have fought in uh, Europeans have entrusted black people in their armies and everything. In the apartheid government, we had black police people, uh, black soldiers. They gave them guns. Wow, they entrusted us. Ridiculous. Now, the next one says, uh, Gaddafi Libyan socialist Jamira government abolished any form of slavery and racism. In fact, slavery was punishable by death under Gaddafi's uh, regime. Oh well, the Europeans were the first ones to abolish it, but we're not gonna be grateful to Gaddafi for that. Um, what is he done about uh, his brothers and sisters? That are, what is he said about? Uh, yeah, I mean the, the the Arabs. Has he said anything about to these brothers who are enslaving our people? Nope. And so yeah, that doesn't mean anything. Ghana, the moment Colonel Mama Gaddafi was crowned king, king of kings uh, by chiefs in Accra, the capital city of Ghana. The chiefs didn't just woke up and crown Gaddafi king. He worked hard and earned the kingship. Yeah, did nothing to earn the kingship. Obviously, these black people that are trying to crown him, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's all a colonial mindset. The, the, the thing is, if we're going to talk about, if we're going to make Petrus Lumumba uh, the face of Pan-Africanism, we have a challenge of tribalism. There are, there are certain groups who will say, but yeah, why Lumumba? You know? They will bring up all this debate, just like the, 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 Pan-African, the Pan-African parliament. They couldn't come to the to, to an agreement, there was a, a fight between the two groups, the French-speaking and the English-speaking uh, groups, and some were saying we should move the parliament to, to, to France. But here's the thing. This is the reason why that, uh, the, the French-speaking African leaders, so-called leaders, actually nominated that the parliament be taken to France. Africans are always looking for someone neutral, someone outside of Africa to take, to, to be given that, uh, it's a colonial mindset. That's why Gaddafi is so easy to praise for Africans because they, have a, they are, they are, they are, they are um, mentally colonized. They, they cannot, they, they are willing to bow down to Gaddafi. But if, if we say, let's crown Petrus Lumumba, then we have uh, tribal issues amongst us. Uh, there will be that tribe over there saying, ah, why, why, why Lumumba, you know, but because uh, there is in the colonial mindset, there is that thing where Arabs have a higher status in the minds of a colonized people, so, or a colonized Africans, uh, because he is, a, he is a settler, and so because he's a settler, he's, um, it's just like, I mean, when, 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 uh, when, when a white person in South Africa comes in and they speak a local language, like black people get goosebumps, you know, because this person is supposed to be better than us. And look, they are trying. Even if they haven't done anything impressive, look, oh, he's trying so hard. You know, um, there was a, a, a debate about ancient Egyptians, blah, 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 on, on, here on Twitter. And this guy started admitting to some of the truth. And so he asked the question, and then I, I asked him to answer my question first. And, but I asked him to first acknowledge what I was saying. And there was a, uh, a sister who actually, um, she was part of the team that, that was debating for ancient Egyptian being black and African. A very ancient and dead debate, because it's not debated in the scholarly world. So... And then she she stood up for him and said, nah, I mustn't be harsh on him and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, you can't give him an easy pass just because he's 
is a uh, uh, it's like when a white person you know tries a little bit you know, they get given all this extra credit so that's why people want Gaddafi to be king of Africa you know? but they can't say what is done to, to even earn that um okay let's see what's the next one this one is still talking about him being crowned as king okay yeah so and then the last one oh this is the last one it says i can go on and on and on but i will adjourn my testimonies about brother leader colonel mama gaddafi for a, a symposium discussion in the near future i pray that almighty allah forgive my leaders shortcoming and granting the highest ranks in Jana, Amin, Ya, Rabal, Alamin. So, so basically now what these uh, pro-Gaddafi people are trying to tell us, are trying to tell us is that, yeah, he had his fault. So we should uh, look at the good stuff. And for me, it's not even about his fault. Doesn't matter whether Gaddafi had never done anything wrong if he had never even bombed tanzania or whatever he had done nothing wrong even if he had never oppressed the two table people how i how the the, the, the only way to bring in uh, someone into the brotherhood to allow someone uh, from a colonial group to be incorporated into the brotherhood the only way is to start at the beginning they need to address the first contact between us and them you know it's just like um uh, you you find you find uh, people that date for example white people and say yeah it's not racist she's not racist and they're nice to us i mean that that's what people don't understand there are two kinds of racists as uh, I give the I give credit to the honourable uh, Malcolm X Shabazz for for this uh, for what I'm about to say. So, in one of the speeches, he explains the difference between a a liberal and a conservative. Most black people don't even understand what racism is. They think a racist is one that hates black people. Racism. It has nothing to do with hate. Just like a sexist, a sexist man um, doesn't hate women. You know, you can love women and still be sexist. <laughs> it's it's basic. It's not deep. So, a racist has nothing to do with hatred. You, so the, the, you have two kinds of racists. You've got the conservative. The conservative is the one that outspoken and says, "I don't want you people," and calls us all kinds of names and he waves the, that racist flag and whatever that's what um most black people understand as racism and that is the useless racism like that's the one we can completely ignore it's there's nothing about it as long as the person doesn't come in and in, in, into your territory and attacks you they can go wave their flag and and scream all the nasty stuff they want i couldn't couldn't be couldn't kill it but the other one is called the liberal the liberal is the one that befriends like the liberal will date your sister will call your mother mama they'll come to your family function you'll introduce them to your to the family those are the dangerous ones and Malcolm X called the the most dangerous races is the fox. The the most obvious one that like come on that's they are a cliche. Those ones are called he calls the the wolf. So the difference between the wolf and the fox, the wolf, you know the wolf is about to eat you, but the fox is slack. I remember in primary school, uh, basic English, they used to say the fox is a liver blank and you feel it, you catch your mark, the fox is sly. So, why this is important? The fox, um, if, if anybody knows the history of rock and roll, how Elvis Presley became the king of rock and roll, he became a fox. 
uh, black people during that time in the United States could not publish music and all that stuff. So they had their Sunday sessions. Uh, the Sunday sessions that date back to the times of slavery, where they would have, you know, that time for themselves. They would go to church, and, you know. So they that was the time when they had their creative um, sessions when they made music and during those times they would just make music uh, for the soul but they could not record and publish so Elvis befriended these people and because of the being gullible as many of our people are they embraced him and they immediately assume the goodness of his heart because hey brother he's a different white man he likes us he comes and hangs out with us every sunday you know so elvis befriended them they taught him everything the music the dance moves everything and when he was done when he was good he's like ah, now i think i'm sorted he turned his back on them and left and became and went and published the music as if it's he is the creator and became the king of rock and roll same old trick so the liberal so for me if if somebody says oh yeah i'm dating a white, a white person and they ah they then they are uh, they're very good you know they're a nice person or this is my white friend like for me if a, a white person would want to be my friend I, I, I asked them, so what is your take on, uh, on reparations, brother? What is your take on uh, on the land issue, on, yeah, on North Africa? Who, who, who is the, the, who are these, like, whatever dispute is there, the ancient Egyptians, whatever. There is no Arab that, that has ever even, that would ever that would ever stand up and say, well, you know what, truly speaking. In fact, the funny thing is, anybody that stu studies history, the only, only uh, non-African scholars that have stated that the ancient Egyptians are black are European. There's no Arab scholar. That comes to show you, you are, that the Arabs are far more evil in terms of the, the whole uh, uh, imperialism. Arab imperialism is Western yeah, European imperialism. So, how come I can count so many European scholars that can present their works where they actually state that the ancient Egyptians were black, including uh, E.A. Wallace Budge, from the, uh, who was working for the, the British Museum that was stealing all the artifacts. In, in his earlier work, that's why if you... <laughs> Anybody can use his work. It depends on which stage. When he started out, he was saying the ancient Egyptians were the, from the great white race. And then as he studied further and he came and started even linking it to, he came as, as far as Central Africa to link the ancient Egyptian culture. He is eventually said that it's actually an African language and says that Aset was, a, was an African woman. And he, he linked... Uh, some of the cultural aspects to to the, the practices that were still going on in Sudan. So, uh, the people will still... I, I'd, I'd rather give a, a Wallace Budge a pass. I'm like, okay, well, he was ignorant in the first stage, but he, in his later works, he shows. Uh, and I can understand where he was coming from, why he would have made such a conclusion, and also the people that came before him he obviously started from there. He didn't lay a new foundation to Egyptology. So there are many white Egyptologists, historians, that have accepted and have even done work. I mean, um, we even have uh, uh, the one dude that all white people hate, Martin, uh, Martin Bavar. No, no, Martin Bernal. Even Martin, ba Martin Bavar from Egypt, a white guy. Who wrote uh, the white, uh, the Black Genesis? He talks about the ancient Egyptian roots being African. He, so, and he's hated by who? By an Arab called Zahi Hawass, 
of Egypt, of the, the I don't know if he's still uh, head of the, the, the head of uh, the Department of Antiquity in ancient Egypt, Department of, of Egypt, whatever, ancient Egypt. That guy hates Robert Bavar with all his heart because Robert Bavar is a white guy who came out and said the ancient Egyptians were, were black. Robert Bavar is not an Arab. He was a, he's a white man born in Egypt. So, um, really, it's ridiculous to to even think just because, yeah, in terms of DNA, Arabs are more, they have more African blood than any other European. <coughs> but anyone that has uh, studied the destruction of black civilization, the mulatto is more problematic. The wrong mulatto. Yeah, we don't want to put all the mulattoes in one box. The good mulattoes have done good contributions, but the ones that decided to push white supremacy, they are more dangerous than white people. They they go hard, you know. So the fox and the and the and the and the and the wolf. So Mama Gaddafi was a, was a fox. He was slack. He was not obvious. That's why a lot of people um, saw what he did and. And all these people went and crowned him, you know. So, <laughs> uh, like, I really uh, don't care about what he, his donations and things he has done for people. You haven't done anything for a man until you've given him the resources and have taught him how to fish. So, and, and for him, it's not just him teaching a man to fish. It's him giving that man back his resources that he stole from. That if your ancestors stole from, yeah, if your ancestors stole from, if my ancestors have stolen from a people, the first level of justice is me coming out to address the injustice of my ancestors. And Mama Gaddafi did not do that. I will end it here. Because I would never stop. <laughs> All right. Any, if uh, anybody wants to come in with a a disagreement, bring it on. Put your hand up. We will put you up as a speaker. Anybody that wants to add, um, also very welcome. Anybody that comes from the Arab world, any African from the Arab world, wants to share their experience about what it's like being African in the Arab world, uh, they are also welcome. So at this point, uh, people can come in and, uh, and you can throw in the one, two, three, four comments or questions or whatever. Anybody, anybody? Alright, so just give five minutes and if there's no one, we'll just end the session. Okay, I, we have one request. Okay, so... Yabuya, you can come in as soon as your mic connects. So, so really, yeah, this uh, for me has been very important because if this is not addressed, history will repeat itself. Um, Africans are in the best position to take over the world. In, in, I mean, we have the best positions in everything. We have the, the, the popul the, everyone has a dying population except for us. We have the young people, we have all the skills. Uh, but the reason why Africa is not rising is because we go and win World Cups for France. If you look at the French team that won the, the Soccer World Cup, it was an African team. That's exactly what's happening. It's not that Africans are not capable. It's just that we uh, we give all our contributions and, and and the hard work to other people, and they get the credit. All right, Ayavuya. Uh, yeah. Yes, brother man. Yeah, no, thanks, 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 my brother man, for a very Fruitful and knowledgeable session um, about uh, the individual um, Omar Gaddafi. Um, and to echo your words, I, I, I completely 
I agree with you. Um, you know, as you said, uh, there are those conservatives and those people who are racist. And um, one thing that you said is um, quite profound is that um, we can't we can't really forgive one oppressor over the other. And this is another thing that um, I have seen or heard uh, a lot in this country, South Africa, um, where my people say, no, you know, actually, the British are better than the Africaners. You know, and some will say, no, actually, the Africaners were better than the British. You know, and I think as Africans, we should, we should just agree that uh, no one has the right to own us, whether you are so-called Afrikaner, you are, you are so-called white, um, or, you, or you are so-called an Arab. I think the other thing I would like to, to speak about is this term of white and black. Um, you know, um, this term of white and black um, is a term that was coined to actually oppress us as Africans. Um, the Europeans, when they began traveling the world, they noticed that they are different people with different shades. Um, and then they coined themselves as white. They called the Asians yellow. They called the Indians red. And they called us black. And they made sure that everything is in that order. White is holy. White is angelic. White is perfect. Yeah. Up until you get to black, whereby there's black listening and so forth. And I think that the first thing that we need to do in terms of decolonizing our mind is to stop using the word black. Um, some people will say, no, but it's fine. It's a word that unites us, but we can't unite on top of, of oppression. As we said, the Arabs oppressed us, that's the long and short of it. And we can't really say, you know, but God has and the word black uh, is a word that uh, uh, is an insult to us as Africans. And the word white, these people are not white, these people are Europeans. And the more we call them white in this country, it creates another another, another, another narrative. I've seen this thing coming up, coming up a lot, whereby even politicians will say black Africans. Like, that doesn't make sense. How can they be black Africans? Does it mean that there's white, there's white um, Africans as well? Because the moment, the moment we say that there's white Africans, uh, I mean there's white uh, uh, yeah, Africans, but they, they, they have a claim to this land. But if we push it down the road that you guys are Europeans, right, and you are not Africans, it will, it will also assist us in reclaiming our land. I mean, I, I, I looked at the other day what the word African means. And the word Africano means, means a previous native of Southern Africa. Like, what the hell is that? Since when are Africanos native to this country? You know, so I think um, it, will, it will start with how we label ourselves. Um, and as we said, um, there was a religion, there was a culture that we followed, but we are the only people in this entire world whereby our culture, our religion, um, because look, Christianity is the is, is the culture of the, the Europeans. Buddhism is the culture is, is the culture of the uh, the Asians. You know, Hinduism is the culture of the Indians. But uh, but you see, they really never coined our culture because because the moment they coined it, um, it becomes uh, because spiritually. The religion is spirituality institutionalized. So the moment they institutionalize our uh, uh, culture, it will become a religion. And once it does, and once it becomes a religion, it will have the effect of the of the ability to unite us as Africans. So they did their best not to actually institutionalize our culture. So I think one of the things that we need to do right here, you know, as, as, as young people. Is we need to get to a point where we institutionalize our culture because it is the only way we can unite. Thank you. Thanks, brother. That's very powerful. I agree with uh, um, most of the things you said, especially uh, the, the the whole thing of Black African really gets on my nerves. <laughs> 
<laughs> and anybody that uses that term, uh, they, they either speak out of ignorance or they're trying to perpetuate the same uh, idea that there can be other Africans except black people. Because uh, there are still people that actually think, because if you look at the, the soccer player Zidane Zidane, uh, because he is of North African descent, inverted commas, his parents were Berbers, uh, he's a white man, purely, purely, or there is no such thing as pure white man. They all have African blood, everybody. <laughs> so he. So a lot of people actually look at, I mean, I think in the general history of Africa, when the scholars came together, that was one of the, the debates they had to conclude about how long the white Berbers have been in Africa. Are they indigenous and things like that? But clearly they're not. Uh, historical evidence, the oldest, uh, oldest, Human remains in North Africa are black, the rock paintings are the rock paintings of black people. Just like the same, the same ones as, as of the koi and the sand and so on. But uh, poly, black politicians have been, it, it, within this discussion, black politicians have been the, the, the biggest problem. Or because the whole thing of Gaddafi being. Uh, glorified as some Pan-African when he was not. Uh, it, it has its, 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 its emphasis or its, its power, its hold in, in, in black politicians in Africa because they are the ones who've been pushing his narrative. They are the ones who've been uh, crowning him, like physical crowning ceremonies. Uh, I only know of two, one in Ghana, I don't know if the same one or maybe it's the same event, but um, the one I saw in the video was of, of Kenyan leaders crowning him. But I don't know if it was at the same time as the one in Ghana, which was a different thing. But it's the po it's the politicians and the chiefs, the same people that actually brought Africa to where it is by uh, collaborating with with the invader. Contrary to popular belief, the Europeans did not bring an army and then took over Africa. No, they, they could not do that. Uh, that's why you don't read about uh, the battle of this and the battle of that and the battle of this in Africa, where Europeans or the Portuguese took the... the they don't name these battles because they never really won Africa on the battlefield. <laughs> they won Africa on the spiritual field. And that's why the, they, they basically studied uh, our, our system and found that the head of, of, of our of spiritual leaders were usually the, the king, as you would find uh, throughout Africa, the king was uh, closely linked to the, to, the, to the priest, if he himself was not a priest. Um, so even when you go back to ancient Egypt in Kemet, the most powerful uh, ruling forces were the pharaoh and, and the priesthood. And these were equally, you could say they were equally powerful because uh, what really gave, um, what really gave the, the priest power was the priesthood. And if you could take the pharaoh or uh, baptize him to a different faith, the people would generally follow, even though the people initially resisted somehow. Uh, eventually, it, uh, it took hold. Yeah. All right, and uh, I see Nana B is here. So we're going to give him the mic. He is the reason why this debate, this uh, space is even here. Uh, it was. It started with a debate that I had with him. He's basically the. La I've debated a lot of people here on Twitter about Gaddafi. 
but um, he's the last person. And so we'll give him the mic. Nana B, talk to us. How long have you been here? Have you been listening? Nana B. Was, uh, okay, I don't know. You... <laughs> I see Nana B is, is shy to speak today because uh, the, 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 main, the main reason was to put this up. Okay, he's requesting. All right. Okay, so yeah. So yeah, um, because we were going back and forth. Yeah, man. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Yeah, yeah. I just, I just want to say hi to everyone. Yeah. And I'm gonna be from Ghana, so. Uh, Power to Ghana. And I think I'm enjoying your 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 bit of history. So I just want to say hi to everyone. That's the, that's the, thank you very much. Yeah. 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 All right, man. Oh, okay. I thought so. So yeah, um, I I brought you in. I thought perhaps if you, if you had, uh, if you had listened to the conversation, you had you had been on here for about an hour, over an hour. So we laid out why, why uh, Gaddafi was not here to save Africa. So. And the question still stands to anybody, not just you. I don't really want to put you on the spot if you seem because you seem shy today. I don't know why, but uh, yeah, it's an opportunity for you and anybody to tell us what uh, Gaddafi has systematically done for Africa. And I had initially stated that if you, if if they have a history with a person whose parents or whose grandparents stole the land of my grandparents. And this person comes to me and says, hey, I wanna be your buddy. Uh, I wanna break bread with you. The first thing I would not just accept him is because he says he wants to be my friend. I tell him, you need to come first your first conversation would be to address the injustices of your grandparents how do you uh, plan on giving back the land that your your grandparents stole from my grandparents and have brought us so if he comes and says but i'm bringing cookies um i want to buy you i want to pay for your, your sister's tuition or whatever i'm like no don't we don't want handouts from you the first thing yes we'll take the handouts we'll take the handouts but first as the foundation tell us how you plan on giving us back the land that your grandparents because if you do not bring that discussion first you're not being honest you're not bringing justice justice is a place where you start where they just because the first contact that we had with your people was the injustice they did so you cannot come to us and not start there. So that's what I'm saying. That Gaddafi did not start with the injustice of his ancestors. How they took the land of the Libyan people as Arab settlers and invaders. It's not, it's not a secret why you look at the entire North Africa and you look at all the presidents and all of them. Uh, none of them are black. <laughs> and I say, I still say the Europeans are far better because look at Ghana. Your president is black. When is Ghana, when is any Arab country going to have a black president? It's never going to happen. Not that a black president would be an achievement, but at least the Arabs would not even just give the little deception. You know how the Europeans have, have allowed black people to have political... Uh, so-called power, whatever they want to call it, sit in parliament and become presidents and things like that. But in the Arab world, it's not, it's, they won't let it happen, right? And they might make excuses and say, yeah, but uh, the people are not voting for a black president. Why would the people not be voting for a black president? Because 
Yeah, because of the situation there. Black people are nothing in, in the Arab world. You know, you you are better off uh, in going to freaking United States or Europe as a black person. You have a better chance of becoming something a little at least than in the Arab world. I call it the Arab world, North Africa, which is governed by, by Arabs, ruled by Arabs. Arabs will never. There is no black person that comes from North Africa that is that is a that we know who who's there from which black person I don't know of any black person from North Africa that is 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 in like a scientist or whatever that have done great things. If you wanna see black greatness, you see it in the so called uh, sub Saharan a word that I hate because it's it makes no sense. You do not find we don't hear why don't we I'm I'm always concerned when I I never hear about our brothers and sisters in in North Africa. Okay. Nana wants to holler. There's your chance, brother. Talk to us. Tell us. Hello. Can you all hear me? Yeah, yeah. We hear you, man. Can anyone hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Can you all hear me? Hello. Yeah, we can hear you. Hear me. Yes, we can hear you. We can hear you, guys. Uh, press a hundred to show that you can hear him. Hello. Yes, brother man, we can hear can you. Anyone hear me, please? Yes, we can hear you. Oh. Is there something? Can anyone hear me? Hello. Yeah, we Hello. can hear you. You can speak. We can hear you. We can hear you. Um, Uh, yeah, 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 we can hear you. It looks like you cannot hear us. All right, uh, I'll give all right. you. First of all, uh, I would like to say that the Arab, the Arab colonization or the Arab invasion of, of Africa is well stated. It is not something that is a secret. And it is not something that Muammar Gaddafi. Muammar Gaddafi can solve. Yes, you can make the argument that yes, he can give back the land to the black people. He can, he can yes, he's the land that like his grandfather stole from the black people. But that's, that's a long time ago. I'm not here to defend him, of course. I feel so. It's well, not a long time ago. He has to give back the land. That is true. He didn't do that. I'm not here to say that yes, it is right that he didn't do that. That is very fine. But, I am speaking to the I am speaking to the father. Can you all hear me, please? Yes, we can hear you. I am speaking to the father. Despite 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 he not despite he not giving back the land to the people as as we would have expected him to. Of course, he's the first black, he's the first Arab leader to render an apology. Render an apology. To the black world for the enslavement, the enslavement of Africans by his grandparents. He is the only, I mean, first and only Arab leader. This is, this is fact. This is not disputed. This is not something that we can dispute. He is the only leader from the Arab world who rendered an apology to the African people for the misgivings of his grandparents. Let us know that he also comes from an indigenous tribe, the Berber tribe. And it is not as though that was a dominant tribe. No. The Berber tribe is actually a Berber tribe. It was also a tribe that, that faced hardships under, under the, the, the colonialism of the Brits under King Dijis. The Berber tribe, you know, is not was not a dominant tribe. On which Mama Bella became was not a dominant tribe. Are you guessing me? So he can also talk about someone who who also who was also whose grandparents or whose how do you call it? Or whose uh, people were also were also 
enslaved or were also yeah, treated badly by the very by the very dominant tribes that people like Jews and uh, monarchs belong. So it is not as though Mama Gadati belongs to the tribe that, uh, that 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 was dominant then he could just he had to struggle, he had to come from the, from the bottom. And this is not his tribe, but people who were from the bottom. So yes, he could have given back the land to the people. That is no doubt, there's no doubt about it. But let me also keep in mind that Muhammad Badassi was also a subject of the very, very oppression, of the very misgivings, of the very enslavement of his tribes, of the people, in, even within Libya. Now, there are material things, there are, there are very, very material evidence points to the fact that Muhammad Badassi tried to do something for the African people. You can call it or how Gaddafi used Pan the Pan African government to advance Pan Arabization. I don't think this is very, very true. I don't think this is very true. Because if you know the relationship between Muammar Gaddafi and the Arab, the other Arab leaders, you are going to know that there was absolutely no way Muammar Gaddafi was going to have a headway with Pan Arabization. There was no way. He had very, very sour relationships with, with Saudi Arabia, with the UAE, with, you know, even uh, this guy in Syria, what's his name? Yeah, the senior leader, Bashar al Assad. Yeah, you know, we had very sour relationships with the various leaders in the Arab world. There was absolutely no way. My argument is that there is absolutely no way he could have pushed on with Pan Arabization. Yes, he preached it, but he did not even contribute to it. As much as he contributed to Pan Afghanistan, there is no doubt about it. He did not contribute much to Pan Arabization, but he contributed to Pan Africanism. And this is our embedded in facts. His contribution is for the development of the African Union. In my country, Ghana, for instance, he supplies the oil under the leadership of Rollins. He was the one who held Rollins. And even when Kufor came to take over from Rollins, Gaddafi was still there supplying this country with oil. That is, that is Ghana alone. Let's talk about the other infrastructure, the other infrastructure of political uh, projects carried out across certain countries within the African continent. And on top of it all, let's talk about Africa in South Africa. One of the most, one of the most All right, uh, we can't hear you anymore. Anyway, uh, let me let me come in where you uh, with the points that you've mentioned. So, okay, clearly you were not uh, here in the beginning of the discussion. Uh, I see you bringing up uh, things that he he gave, you know, and infrastructure and all these things, and we've we've laid out that that is unimportant. Uh, if you're going to give Mama Gaddafi for that, first give it to the Europeans because they are the ones who started putting up infrastructure. Go to Ghana, where you live. Uh, most of the infrastructure uh, is, it does not come from Mama Gaddafi, it comes from Europeans. I'm not saying most of it, I'm talking if you compare Mama Gaddafi and so throughout Africa, clearly. Um, we're not interested in infrastructure. Uh, we're not interested in oil or handouts, or any form of handouts. And your first argument about Gaddafi being, not being, uh, coming from a, 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 a Berber tribe that is, was not dominant, blah, blah, blah. Uh, that is relevant because you said he apologized. So, if he's not guilty, why did he apologize? He should have said, uh, it just doesn't make sense. If if I'm not from the European colo colonizers, why should I apologize? If you apologize, it means you share the bloodline. So that's a contradiction coming from you there. But then also we don't care about, um, I'm, I just don't want to use some French, we don't give a, a French toast about an apology you know we are not children here uh, or 
we are not lovers of Mama Gaddafi or, you know, ap apologies are sweet things between uh, people in relationships. You know, we're not interested in apologies, you know. We are interested in reparations. That's the only thing we're interested in. And Mama Gaddafi did not contribute anything that would systematically empower Africa. And in fact, he, all the projects, we talk about the satellites and all the infrastructure, all of it was to empower him. And when you said that uh, he could not contribute to Pan-Arabization because the Arab world hated him. Um, I, was, I addressed it in the beginning. That is uh, uh, not tr it's, 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 it's not true. And here's the thing. In South Africa, you have the a man called F.W. Declack, the last apartheid president. He was hated by all white people when he held Mandela's hand and put it up and won, won the Nobel Peace Prize with him. They hated him. But guess what? They understood later what he was doing was actually to leave a legacy for white people. What he did secured the future of white power in South Africa. You know, So just because they hated him, they hated him because they did not understand. And 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 when we talk about him advancing pan-Arabization, it's something he started in his own country. Like I said, in Mama Gaddafi's government, what indigenous languages became official? None. So he gets zero credit. He he, he advanced pan-Arabization. In fact, in fact, when he started in his career. That was his mission. That's very important to, to, to point out, which you left out, is that when he started his career out, his passion was to push pan-Arabization and to unite the Arab world, which he failed. He failed because Arabs were struggling to unite, just as Africans were struggling to unite. But then he had a bigger, he saw a bigger picture, which the Arabs did not see. And so they hated him temporarily, yeah. But if my Mama Gaddafi lived long enough, if the Europeans did not take him out, he would have laid the blueprint or the foundation for pan-Arabization. Africans would have rallied behind him. And why is he agreeing to be crowned as king? If you go to uh, the biblical myths, Jesus runs away from being crowned to be a king. Why? Because it's the principle of of uh, 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 of um, of ethics, you know, you if if we come together and we say we are brothers, right, and and people just wanna like people just wanna crown you as king for what, and he just accept it, and he knows very well that black people have always been ruled by people that look like him. Why is he agreeing to continue that? Instead, he should decline and say no. Let the one who looks like the indigenous people be the one that gets crowned. He's never put the the needs. It's, it's basically like white women uh, collaborating or in, inviting African sisters into the feminist movement. It's not sisterhood because the white woman does not start by addressing the black woman's uh, plight in her movement, in her white supremacist system. She wants to um, have the movement as if they are all on the same level. They are not. <clears throat> Gaddafi could become president because of his skin color. There's no one else who could. So he understands that and he knows that. And he talks about uh, that European colonialists should pay uh, 777 trillion US dollars in reparations. What has he said about reparations by the Arab world? Nothing. You see. So, uh, it's not even about whether he gave the land or not, and all these things. It's about the fact that he did not even have the right spirit to put indigenous people first before himself. He should be second. That's just common sense. You cannot, uh, it's just like white people that join these uh, 
this black liberation movement and wanna be imagine like a white if you have a white person joining a, a black liberation movement and then they they put him as president and he agrees he's uh he is not g uh, uh, genuine as a white person you should say no this is not about us yes it's about us as a people human beings but because you guys are the ones who were given the bottom of the bottom of the bottom position and treatment I will stand at the back. And also, Mama Gaddafi and all that he was doing and the company he set up with, the, I think it's Strathcom or whatever, where he set up the whole satellite system, he did not give any African countries any shares. So he was, and, and the fact that if, if, um, if I, I start a company now and employ or your brothers and sisters. Um, I'm not giving you shares. It's not. We're not. I, I'm not. I'm. I'm. I'm actually um, looking for servants, for subjects. If you truly seek equality, you should give everybody equality. And that central bank that he was going to start would not empower Africans. It would empower him. So he would have had Africa behind his back. And with that, he could go to Saudi Arabia and say, hey, I got the work done. And Saudi Arabia would listen and say, hey, you are very intelligent. We did not see what you were trying to do. And now we see it. Thank you. And they would welcome him and embrace him because he would have used Africans to eliminate Europeans out of Africa and replacing the uh, the power with with Arab with uh, with Arab power, and all Africa will be ruled by Arabs. That's basically what he was doing. So I'm saying he did nothing for Africans in his own country in terms of empowerment. I don't care about free education, blah blah blah. That stuff. Uh, we we have free education, freaking apartheid uh, South Africa. All the things you can mention about Gaddafi has done. The white man did it long before him. Every little thing you can mention. I, any item you are thinking of now, let you say uh, Gaddafi was Pan-African because it did. The, Euro, the Europeans did it first. Even this uniting Africa under one currency. Um, the British Empire had united all the countries that were under the British Empire under one banner one currency and we all sang this one one national anthem which was long live the queen we used the pound and we were part of the uh, uh, the the commonwealth the british commonwealth so and people could benefit from from the british uh, that commonwealth because there were certain for, the, for example uh, for whatever the period it was a South African could go to the UK without a visa, just a passport, whereas someone from the Congo could not. So there were those benefits. So now we should embrace the Queen of England, just like our presidents are, because you must not forget the same people that are giving us Gaddafi as king, are the same people that, that go and bow to uh, Lizzie uh, at, at, at the Buckingham, Buckingham Palace. You know, they take pictures with her and they all look like servants. So, basically all I'm saying is no one can present what Gaddafi has done, which European imperialists did not do. Whether it's giving out millions, Europeans have given out much more in aid. Uh, whether it's building houses, we here in South Africa during apartheid, the people that were brutalizing and killing us built houses for us. And they still stand. They are better than the houses which... The black government is building today <laughs> so basically what i'm saying is if you're gonna tell me anything that Gaddafi has done please bring something which i cannot point to a european and say they've done it before him and bigger than him thank you mr william mr william 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 barros Yes, yes, sorry, sorry, I was on mute. Do you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk to us. Okay, 
Okay, okay. Th thank you very much. I appreciate it. Sorry for time for my English. My first language is French, but uh, sometimes I've lost some words. Okay, but thank you. I agree with everything you say, everything you did, everything you did for our community. I think it's a very, very good, good way. Uh, if I can add something, I think the first thing, in our, our position, the chemical people, you should know our story. And uh, about now, speak about Kadhafi, it's a good way, but you need to forget, all the skills you need to win is nobody can say fast. It's our job. You, me, Kevin, people need to do that. Don't forget, Kadhafi is killed in the Arabic guys. And um, why Kadhafi decide to move to the Pan African guy? Because all the Arabic refused to work with him. And what is the, the, for me, in my point of view, I am not expert on geostrategy and something like that. But Kadhafi has a global vision and understood without, if you want to control the world, you need to have Africa in the pocket. And that's why Kadhafi fought. Because Kadhafi stayed in, the, in power in Libya during 42 years. Nobody tried to kick him off. But when he started to open the door and made many, many investments in the African country, all the country, US, French, and French, decided to kill him. And uh, just to centralize, because I mean, all the people cannot do this if I was uh, committing, uh, committing um, mindset. You need to take the control. Me, you, the black people. Don't stay and wait. Somebody can help you. It's fake. Now when you discover some people, it's now put in the first, the China, the Japan, the Russia, no, anything. It is the same way. It is the same behavior. Divide for succeed. And uh, for me, the, the key you need to find is to find the our language. But now I speak to you in English. It's not mine. It's not my ancestral language. Now, I, I am able to speak in French. It's not my ancestral language. Because when I'm I starting to learn African language, I feel the vision of the world is absolutely different. Uh, I try to make some example when I discuss with the people uh, younger than me. When you say just hello, for example, in English you mean good morning. When you start in that, you say, okay, good morning, because the guy, when he says good morning, yes, man, for him, the day will be good. But if you use some language, using his love in Africa, Central, Central Africa, he says, America, it means God, how can I say that? God bless you, happy to see you because God bring you in the face of me. That is a different concept. And all this thing you have the same way all the time. Uh, I am able to give you many examples for that. And that's why you need to focus on that. You need just to back to become us. Now, my name is William. But because maybe my parents like from some American, but you need just to become us. And the only people in the world is not us. It's a black guy. If you go in China, the China use the China name, Xi Jinping, Xi Jinping, something like that, the Japanese. But when you see the black guy, you have something, you say, oh, I am American, my name is John Lewis. I am Brazil, my name is uh, Elson Arante de Nascimento Pele. I am French, my name is uh, Kylian Mbappé. I am, uh, I, I am England, my name is uh, Rashford, for example. Because you have no speech of that. And without, without this, uh, this back to the root, I think that is the first thing you need to do. That is, that is all for me. Thank you for listening. All right. Thanks, brother. Yeah, that's a fact. Uh, the West uh, killed him. But what Africans misunderstand is that they think the West killed him because he was... Uh, he was he was doing good for Africa. No, he was threatening. He was threatening Western imperialism in Africa, which would then be replaced by Arab imperialism. That's why Europeans had. Uh, so people then tend to misunderstand that. Oh, if Europeans hate the person, then it means we gotta like him. But it doesn't work like that. Yeah. All right. Thanks, man. Let me. I'm gonna give a. I'm going to give Nana B to say something and then we close. Uh, it's quite late. I got to 
got, a, got other commitments to get to. Okay. Uh, he disappeared. Yeah. I don't, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, okay, uh, before you speak, before you speak, uh, did, oh, you, God, did, you, did you understand my question? Eh? You. Did you understand my question? Nana B, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I hold, hold on. I asked you a question. Uh, that's why. Can you hear me? You cannot even compare, Mama. You can't. You can't mention Western imperialism in the same breath as Mama Dada is imperialism. for for the want of a better word. No, you can't say that at all. To tell me that there was free education in South Africa and then we had one curse, the British had one curse, uniting all of Africa, please. No. That is, there is. Okay, Nana. Absolutely. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. I I'm very sorry. Can you hear me? There is absolutely no relationship between what Mama Gaddafi was doing and what the rest of there is no relationship between them. And yes, you can speculate and say you want them to do it. And then you present them to the Arab world and tell them, yeah, but no, no, no. That is your, that is your speculation. Uh-huh. The various infrastructure that he put up was not meant to expand Muhammad Gada. No. It was not meant to expand Muhammad Gada. Those infrastructure went physically towards the expansion of the African continent. Physically. Uh, Brother man, can you hear me? Brother man, can you hear me? Unlike the entire in Ghana, for instance, where they build forts and they build houses and they build roads and they build railways, specifically because they want to loot and make and have these railways and these transports as route. That they are going to transfer the goods from Africa into their country. That is not what Mama Gaddafi did. That is not what Mama Gaddafi did. He did not build the various infrastructure within this continent in order to well, transport or loot or take. I don't even know how to put this. You cannot compare the AD. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, the brother there is just preaching, I guess. Because my question was, I asked him to to tell us what Mama Gaddafi did, which Europeans did not do before him. And he's still talking about infrastructure. Europeans built infrastructure before Gaddafi. Uh, whether it's free schools or free this, whatever, hand out Mama no, Gaddafi. I mean, I mean if, 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 if you want, I can answer for you like, this question. Oh, you, oh, do you understand my question? So my question is, yeah, name, yeah, that's good, that's good. yeah, yeah. Please don't give a speech. About, Hold on, don't no, give a speech. No, Just, speech. yeah. It was for the for some rights. Yeah. Religion. If you can name, no, hold on, please. Let me. I just want to clarify my question. If you can name five things, whatever things which Mama Gaddafi did for Africa, which Europeans did not do before him. Thank you. That's yes, that's course. what I'm interested in hearing. Thanks. Yes, uh, I mean, five things. I am I am not able to to uh, how can I to give you five things. Even if it's Mama two. Karafi, yes, exactly. Mama Karafi did 
three, from, in my in my opinion, three things very important for Africa. The first thing he created, he was he explained to Africa how to become really independent to the West. That is the most thing you decided. For example, you know, in now in Africa, you have one organization is named uh, uh, United Africa Organization. <coughs> All the subvention comes from the European and US countries. But what can I say? If you want to end it to become free, you need to stop. You don't need to money for the development. Now stop. That is the first thing. He said, okay, all the way, I will give my money for you guys. That is the first thing. The financial independence. The second way, he decided now, we have the country. We have a lot of sun every time. You need to become um, independent, energetic, energetic independence. That's why Mama Kanafi decided want to make some huge pipeline between Mali, Sudan, Chad, and Libya. He wants to create them. And that's why he become very close to Chad. Uh, the president was there. It's uh, Ibris Debi. So Mali now, if you see Mali now, we have a lot uh, cow. We have a war now with Mali. That was the French uh, Korean one operation to help the Mali fight Islamic. But you know what means Islamic? If you if you look well, you say the Islamic is war with the French. Anyway, that is the second one. And in the same time, Mama Kanafi created one company, airplane company. The name is Africa Airway. The price is cheaper than all the other companies. And this way, help a lot of Africans to travel without any, any problem. Now, Africa Airway doesn't exist. Look the price. If you want to go to Bamako, if you want Bamako, the um, the capital of Mali, if you want to go to Accra, if you want to go to anywhere, you have nothing. And Mama Karafi built the link between uh, African country. For example, now, if I am in uh, Nigeria, I want to go to the Congo, I have to go to London, London back to Nigeria. That is no sense, guys. No sense. No sense. And the last thing he made is name one company named Oilinka. All Libya was in, you see, all the Africa have, the, have uh, uh, energy resources, you have petrol, but you have no technology to transform and to use. All Libya did that for them. And that's why it's not the same for Texaco. Texaco does not that. Texaco take, go to the US plant and back to you. And Kadhafi said, if you want to become free, if you want to raise, you need, no, no you need to transform you are projected by your own self. That's what my mother said. And for that, that's why he paid the price, the dead price. And the last, and for me, the last and the big point that if you want to create, you want to put, um, uh, how do you say in the name? Oh my God. Uh, sorry. Um, for the telecom, you know what you use when you want to call somebody, you use internet. You have to put something uh, in the stack. I forgot the name in English. Sorry. Uh, how do you say that? Somebody speak French? Oh, okay. Do you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you. Even though your line is not so good. But Sat yeah. sat satellite. 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 Okay. Exactly. All right. Can I just want to put a satellite? Okay. All right. For that, what is the goal of the satellite? Okay. For purpose to, uh, to allow all the African people to have strong internet, to have good conversation. Now, the fight is not again in the, in the, in the, in the room. Now, all the fight is the satellite. You have good internet connectivity. And Mama Kadhafi want to put the satellite. And that one, he said, Sarkozy said, mm -hmm. if Africa has the own satellite, French lost a lot of money. Because let me give you one example. If you are a Cameroon, you want to call somebody in your inside country in Cameroon, the Cameroon pay for you the French satellite. That is the It is the same for all the African countries. All the same babies for the African country. If you if you imagine that if you are you are living in the same city with somebody, but of course because you are not have a satellite. 
you have to call them and who are the friendly ones if you have african Sudan, french or uh, western countries they can control the population so that's that's why the front is able to see if i want to put some countries in black black house to town for i don't know one week i am able to do that i am stopping it. and uh, all this way well, all this sudden that's the focus but anyway I don't want to speak at the kind of the angel eye, something like that, but it's not my question, but I think why, as a dirty trick. Okay. All right, before you go, I have a question for you. So, yeah, you did make a speech, but anyway, at least you did cut it a bit short. Um, you mentioned, you mentioned the, the, the airline. You mentioned the satellite. How many country? how many, okay, how many African countries own that satellite? Uh, no one. Eh? How many? No one. No one. Okay. Zero. All right. Uh, how many African countries have... Uh, no, no, no. I mean the one that Gaddafi put up. How many uh, African countries have shares in the airline that Gaddafi put up? Uh, how many have uh, in the airline that Gaddafi put up? The airline you mentioned that Gaddafi put up. How many yeah. African countries have shares in that airline? All the African All countries. The African which which? Uh, which? Uh, Cameroon, Togo, that's why okay. How many? Uh, what are the what are Cameroon's shares in the airline? African airline. Yeah. How many? What are the shares? How much shares does Cameroon have in the airline? Uh, I don't have. I don't have a number. I don't have a number. We can check now with the girl. If someone check now, I don't have a number. Sorry. You don't have a number. Okay. All right. Please check, and then and then let us know. And and the satellite, the satellite you mentioned, how many African countries actually own that satellite system? I feel, in my in, in my sense, maybe something changed. But when I think African countries, for me, I I don't understand. Okay, just, so it doesn't count. It does. So it doesn't yeah, count. For me, it doesn't count. For me, I just think about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so. That's what I think. South Africa plays its own game because you know if you know the real story of South Africa, press, um, that's why. But like, all the subsidiary South Africa, no one, no one. Can't. Yeah, you, you can't even mention South Africa. You see, when we are talking about, uh, you mentioned South Africa. South Africa is run the, the, It's in terms of ownership, it's white monopoly capital. So, exactly. so the interest of this discussion is how the ordinary black person is empowered by these things. And I'm not talking about, yeah, uh, he, he created jobs uh, or things like that. We are talking about how, because pen, if you understand, you remember Pan-Africanism, right? What a lot of people do not understand. Pan-Africanism was hijacked by black politicians. Pan-Africanism was in established or the idea that the, the concept was established in the 1800s by Africans in the diaspora. The black politicians in Africa, African politicians hijacked all these uh, uh, systems, uh, Pan-Africanism and things like that. They abuse these terms. It's not just Gaddafi. Black politicians all over, they abuse the terms Pan-Africanism, Africa must unite for their own agenda. So this is what I'm trying to address. So um, the, 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 the airline, you can check and come back. I mean, that shouldn't take you so long. I'm going to give Nana B. Uh, Nana B, I'm going to give you a chance to speak. Don't make a speech. I need items listed. Make it short. I'll give you uh, five minutes to name the items which Gaddafi did. And also, Brother Man uh, Williams, <clears throat> everything you've said, uh, airline, white people, also, whether you go to, uh, to London or whatever, I hear that. They've all put up pipelines, everything. Europeans have done that. Like you mentioned, the benefit of not flying via London. But I've also given you uh, examples of benefits that Europeans had given to countries that were part of the British Commonwealth, like a South African could fly. No, no, Hold on. That, that's why 
<laughs> no, wait, let, let me finish. Uh, I mentioned that a South African could, at, at one point, a South African could go to London without a visa, you know, uh, because they were part of the Commonwealth. There were other things that were benefit, that were sort of benefits. So if you're going to give Gaddafi uh, credit for that, first give it to, to uh, Elizabeth. So for me, if, if we're going to give Gaddafi that credit, we should then uh, sing Long Live the Queen because she also gave some of these uh, benefits that people are talking about. But these are not empowerment. You know, this is not what we call, you know, it, when we talk about empowerment, it's not someone building a house for you. It's someone giving you freedom to do what you need to do, giving back what they stole from you. If you stole my land, give back my land, and I'll build my own house. That's what we talk. We 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 mean by empowerment, you know. Because if you do things for people, if you build me a house, you can kick me out tomorrow. If you build a satellite for me to use, if you use a satellite for me to use, you can always kick me out of that satellite system tomorrow. If you Give me this whatever pipeline. You can always cut me out of it because you own the damn thing. That's not empowerment. Empowerment means tomorrow, even if we don't get along, I can still use it. So none of the things which um, Gaddafi did gave Africans the benefit that even if he doesn't like them, they could continue using them. None. I mean, the African Union, when it was formed, Gaddafi was giving them the funds for membership. He could decide tomorrow, screw that country over there, I'm not giving them the fund. Hey, that's not empowerment. That's what Europeans do. To, to, that's what we call neo-colonialism. Neo-colonialism involves uh, putting infrastructure and giving people things that they cannot pay you back for so that tomorrow they stay indebted to you. Yes, that's what I'm saying about that. that so, Sharp, uh, please check uh, how much Cameroon owns in shares to that uh, airline that Gaddafi set up, and then come and tell us. All right, uh, I will. <coughs> we have basically nine minutes just, left. Just let me let me let me just add something. No, no, no! Please don't add anything. We don't have time. Uh, just please answer that one. Uh, I wanna give. Nana B, five minutes, and then I'll give Turbulence five minutes, and then we are closing. Okay. Yeah. Please come back with that answer. Nana B, you've got five minutes, please. List. No speech, please. Just the list. List of things, items, or programs that have empowered Africans. What has Gaddafi done for... For the indigenous people of Libya, how many how many indigenous Libyan uh, languages? Uh, okay, Nana B still connecting turbulence. I see you are here. Uh, please take your five minutes and hit hit us with a with a good punch.
since he didn't do that, that since he was like so eager to become a king among black people, that's the issue, you see, on the psychological profile. I don't know if you get this one. Williams. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 no, I, yeah. Yeah. I want to, I yeah, want yeah. to okay. your feelings, but anyway. So, so, so then after, about the handouts, what you have to understand and what, uh, Many people don't understand in the French realm is that we are bad in economy and we don't understand how and why ownership is so powerful. What's happening is that you've been citing like satellites, airlines, pipelines. I will take the, just those three. What's the problem with that? It's still the same ownership. All of this, and, and when you link that to the psychological profile, you will notice that it's only a centralization of power to Libya because all those pipelines would have gone to Libya. Why? What for? If you know black history, you would know that what Arabs did during the slavery, they blocked the Mediterranean um, access to the European. That's why the European had like to um, go around Africa to go to India and China. And that's how they did the, the slavery stuff. And so the second thing you have to know is that while blocking this, they make a, made a treaty to ensure the Europeans they wouldn't be selling us arms, they wouldn't be selling us machine guns and so on. So you have to keep that in mind. And what do you see? You see uh, Gaddafi centralizing resources into Libya to sell them to Europe. That was the whole plan. That's why he started by pan-Arabization, not pan-Africanism. So I, I don't know what more to add. That's all for me. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Turbulent, for, for that contribution. That's very powerful. And then, uh, William, I just want to um, uh, give you a chance to just tell us how much Cameroon owns of oh, Africa Airways. Pardon? No, no, I, I, I just was listening to Chubbeland, I don't check, but anyway, just give me a little chance to give me a quick answer to Chubbeland, please. Just a, uh, a quick answer. No, hold on, because uh, we're running out of time. I was, I was, I was, I was, uh, so the thing is I need to leave. Uh, I wanted, okay, I wanted, anyway, uh, hold on. Chubbeland, uh, yeah. I wanted to. to me, I'll follow you back in, I will give you an answer, we can speak. Uh, okay. Okay, I will give no, you, okay. No problem. So now. In terms of ownership, I just want to read it out for you guys. Anybody can go check it out. Africa Airways is a subsidiary of the Libyan African Aviation Holdings Company, which itself is owned by the Libyan National Social Fund. The Libyan National Investment Company, the Libya Africa Investment Fund, the Libyan Foreign Investment Company, the airline is ultimately owned by the Libyan government. No African, other African countries not Cameroon, not Ghana, none of them have shares. So it means nothing. If really this was a pan-African move, as people want to claim it is, this should have been equally or distributed. The ownership of the airline, should, Gaddafi should have invited and said, brothers, let's work together. We don't need handouts. You know what I'm saying? That's an insult. He should have said, look, South Africa, how... Uh, how much do you want to come in? Everybody needs to have a share in this so that it's not owned by any government. So, uh, because what he did, basically at the end of the day, benefits his, his company that he formed, the Libyan company. So, uh, he said Ghana brings so much. That's what we call Pan-Africanism. Pan-Africanism is not uh, handouts from Arabs that are better than handouts from Europeans. Sorry. All right. Um uh, Okay, we are running out of time. Let me give uh, three minutes to Ayavuya and to Nana B, and then we will close. And by the way, this is being recorded, and everybody can check it out in the archives on YouTube. I will share the link when I've uploaded the video on YouTube. Yeah. All right, Ayavuya, you've got the mic. Please uh, hit us okay. with three minutes. Okay. okay. Uh, turbulence, uh, j'arrive pas à t'envoyer un message. <coughs> Ayavuya. Okay. We can't hear you. 
All right. Okay. So I have Ria as soon as you can you can uh, speak because I see your mic is on, but you uh, no sound is coming out. I just want to mention to Nana B. I'll let you speak. Yeah, Nana B is also struggling to connect. I'll let you. Oh, let me invite you. Uh, invite uh, Nana B. I'll let you speak if you give me straightforward answers. I need. I need answers. Just as um, as you've seen, uh, brother. William gave us a list and for example you mentioned Africa Airways and we've we've pointed out that it's not an empowerment program because none, none of the African governments even owned it and even if governments owned it it does not necessarily mean it's empowerment but anyway it goes deeper than that so uh, I have yeah, so yeah, yeah man yeah, yeah man no, okay. yeah so I think one thing I want to say um, to, uh, to 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 Tabulance and Nana B is that what Gaddafi was trying to do was is not something that's new. Remember that Kwame Nkrumah wanted to do the very same things that Gaddafi spoke about, right? Um, and we need to also realize that as uh, one thing that we need to take from Gaddafi. Oh, okay. Let, let, okay. So let me say. Uh, what 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 my brother here said the host was saying was that uh, it was a form of imperialism. So it it's not you can't compare it to the Western imperialism, but it was a form of it, and it was going to get there, similar to what the Chinese are doing today. But what we need to take from Gaddafi is more of a symbolism, more than a anything else right um as as a man um whom whom was able to I, can't hear I, can't hear I can't hear anything you can't hear anything uh no i can hear you <laughs> i oh, think i think nana b has a has a really bad okay. connection yeah yeah so so comrade what i'm saying yeah, is that we can't we can't take okay okay for, for example we can't really agree with what hitler did but we can learn from what hitler did to say that this is the man who fought for his people right that is simple yeah um even even for Gaddafi, we can't agree with what he did but in terms of in terms of taking it as a symbol we can you know and i get to say you know what this man what he did trying to do this uh, particular issue even though we know what was his, what was his intention but what he did it was something that was actually clear you know uh, but but then again uh, 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 as much as we take it as a symbolism thing it's very important that we don't forget his end goal um because i fear that if we take it so much as a as a as a, as a symbol, um, it would you will end up doing what our African kings and politicians did by actually knighting this man as a king, you know, um, and 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 in a way creating a, another class within Africa because at the end, what Gareth, what Gareth was going to achieve, he was going to 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 achieve the very same thing that the Chinese will want to do. The Chinese want to create a different class within Africa, and that is what Gaddafi was going to achieve. The, the Arabs were, go, were going to be either first or second class citizens in the continent because of the, the, the influence they would have when they control the allies, when they control the currency, and when they control all of these things. But we need to take from him the courage in him to actually do so, right? And we need to ask ourselves quickly, how can we uh, uh, attempt or, or rather do what he attempted to do, but in a different manner, you know? Um, and, and, and guys, look, listen, we can't shy away from the fact that the Arabs also invaded this continent. You know, I think any, any, any <laughs> denialism within us 
uh, will only benefit uh, 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 people that are actually going to benefit from, from us being oppressed. So one thing that we need to agree about is that if we are seeing we are anti uh, 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 we're anti-Western capitalism or anti-Western or, or, or uh, imperialism. We should also be saying, but even you are that, we know what you did, you know, and we should also stand against it as well. <laughs> and I don't want us to argue amongst Africans about Gaddafi. Okay, we are all Africans. Uh, 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 we, the only thing that sh should make us argue is something that will benefit African, uh, whether it's, whether, it's, whether how it should be implemented, but whether or not whether it should it should or not be implemented. So I think comrades, let's agree that let's take Gaddafi as a symbol, but as a symbol, let's take his positive things as okay, if he attempted to do this, how can we do it? But let's not forget what he is represents as a human being, you know. Uh, he's from the Arab nation. Um they 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 they, they uh, at at one point actually colonized this continent for one gain or another. I mean, there's. I mean, even the word Algebulan, the word Algebulani in 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 Hebrew means the land of the black man. And as I said the first time I spoke, that we 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 the the word black was imposed on us as a word to, to demean us. So even the word Algebulan is not an African word. It's not that the way that me, me and you, my brother, would actually term for us when I stand to say, no, this is the land of the black man, because we never understood or, 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 or we never saw ourselves as, as black. We saw ourselves as, as Africans, right? So um, so all of these things actually uh, uh, symbolize that actually at some point, these people actually did come and, and, and oppress us. But um, in closing, uh, before, I, uh, before I make a speech, um, Two things from Gaddafi. One thing as a symbol, a symbol of unity, strength, and as a symbol of, of encouragement, right? But and, and, and but another one that we, we need to also not not forget that what he represents as a human being that he was from a race that oppressed us. Thank you. Thanks, brother. Uh, but uh, one thing I'd like to emphasize is yes, as I said before, I respect Gaddafi for what he wanted. to for his people so i'd like to add that he is a symbol of unity for his people so africans need to understand uh, in the beginning i had the speech by uh, the, the the grandmaster dr henry clark where he's explaining that africans have no friends uh, that's the one part we really 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 need to come into grasp to grasp the, the concept that we are alone even uh, <clears throat> even Steve Biko said it, you know. So uh, we need to understand these things. The that yes, he's a symbol for his people. Just as I mean, Gaddafi is no different a symbol than uh, King Leopard for for his people, than uh, Hitler for his people, than uh, every other imperialist whether it's uh, Hendrik for food for his people, you know. So there's nothing special about Gaddafi. He was uh, an imperialist just like every other imperialist. And even his colonials, the Arab, Arab colonialism is actually worse, like I said. <clears throat> what he wanted to implement was what Europeans have already implemented. It's called neocolonialism where Europeans are funding all your political parties in the country, all your black politicians that you're looking up to, to save you. Um, they fund all of them. They have them in their pockets. So that's neocolonialism, which is what Gaddafi was trying to copy from the Europeans and do the side. <clears throat> if he had managed, he would have eliminated the Europeans. Hence, they immediately killed him. Because they could see he was going to achieve that. And he was not going to free Africa, but he was going to put Africa under imperial, uh, European imperialism. All right, uh, last two minutes for Mr. Turbulence, and then we close. Uh, thank you, thank you, brother. Um, I just wanted to add, uh, we are speaking as if it will, uh, Arab um, colonialism was uh, finished. It's still going on. You know, you still see um, women 
going from Guinea to go to work in the Middle East and they are being mistreated. The first thing they do when they arrive, they they take the passport. Okay, you can be uh, a swirler and say, okay, uh, but you know, they take the passport of every, of every ladies. Yeah, but they mostly do it to, to black women and they oppress them. So don't think this finished. Uh, we, you see what happened when uh, the war broke out in, in, uh, in Libya. Immediately you start seeing like people killing black people in the south. You started to see a uh, slave market appears. And, and to this day you still have slave markets. And it's the same in Mauritania. So yes, he tried to do something, but it wasn't for us. And what we need to remember from this is that yes, we don't have any friends and it's still going on and and Basically, you, you can go back even to Fanon. What Fanon was telling you is that there is a psychological uh, thing going on in our mind that is because of our oppression, our psyche tends to shrink. And this shrinkage is not good. It's good when you're young because like, you, you can recover from, from it because where you lose, you can master in some other place. So the psyche kind of balance itself on this. But when you're too old and too rigid it cannot do this anymore and what the psyche tends to do is to escape and what's what's the only place it can escape to this white world so that's why also uh Gaddafi was so so influential because he was the figure of a white man an arab in this case that is a portrayed as a savior so basically that's it it was again escapism and it's one of the stuff I don't like with with us is escapism and symbolism. Symbolism is just like, oh, we have a black president, so there is no more racism. That's stupid. And we should learn from history. And that's all I needed to add. Thank you very much. Thanks for those words, uh, Brother Turbulence. And uh, <clears throat> in closing, what as Africans we need to understand uh, Europeans already know that their politicians are not going to save them from anything. Well, they don't need saving, but they will never do anything for them. Uh, uh, Europeans, European citizens, they know that their politicians are captured, they are owned by people. So we should understand that no politician will ever free Africa, be it Gaddafi, be it any black politicians you can think of that's alive. All the ones that were have had the spirit of wanting to save Africa where you know, Thomas Sankara and all of them were killed, they could not do that. So the, the salvation of Africa will not come from any politician or any European political system. It will come from the people. We need to have our own system. Only we can free ourselves. That's what we need to come to terms with. We are not children needing someone to come and hold our hands and, and, and deliver us. We are the mothers and the fathers of humankind, the mothers and the fathers of civilization. We don't need children to come and save us. These are our children. So we need to grow up and understand that only we can fix our own mess, take responsibility and accountability for what <clears throat> for everything that's happening to us. I mean, we are accountable for our own oppression, actually, also. We take responsibility for our own freedom. And we can only do that when we move away from this childish uh, mindset of looking for a savior, looking for leaders. Look around the world. Look, in South Africa, we have Indians uh, who are a minority. They have more power than black people. Uh, and their power is not political. <laughs> their power <coughs> is they do everything we preach. They buy Indian. We say buy black. For us, it's a, it's a gospel that we preach. But for them, they don't preach it. They just do. So uh, we need to understand <coughs> that it will not, our liberation of Africa will not come from the African Union will not come from the Pan-African Parliament, will not come from uh, Julius Malema, uh, even though he preaches really great ideas <coughs> and, ex and is 
he has exposed a lot of uh, things and, and helped many South Africans. In fact, he is responsible for helping South Africans understand that they, they did not get freedom in 1994 before he actually opened the can of worms. South Africans were happy with the Rainbow Nation until he said, hey, we need land. You know? so, so it will not come from any politician. Uh, or poly uh, the European political system, it will have to come from cultural unity of Africans, and we do not need a face or a leader with a name and a face that can be identified and marked and eliminated, just like Thomas Sankara and Petrus Lumumba, Chris Hani, Steve Biko, Marco Max, uh, and the many that you can name. Um, we should learn from that history. That history tells us that an, a black messiah will not deliver Africa. Uh, what will deliver Africa is a spirit. <clears throat> you know, Europeans are already in the, their, they in their own right are in, 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 in what you call, uh, they're activists. They call themselves activists in the economic world. They see that they are slaves of the economic system which is uh, controlled by the elite. You know, we, talking about African liberation, we're talking about as if, like, Europeans, all of them are in power, but we zero it into Europeans. Majority of Europeans don't even have power. They are activists. Hence, they even formed a blockchain. Blockchain is an activist movement. And they've created it in such a way that... Um, it doesn't matter that you, you cannot target a person to end blockchain. You know, there were, it's an activism against the, the, the economic system, which is a, a controlled economic system where the, the, <clears throat> the government is funded by, by, by the elite and therefore the government bails out the elite and, and writes legislation Everything they do, they do for the benefit of the elite. So it's it's quite crazy how Europeans who are not in our position feel like they need to fight for their freedom <clears throat> in terms of uh, being free from government control and all these things, you know. And yet we as Africans look to government, black government, for our salvation. So I feel like we. Uh, not just in, in terms of action, but in terms of ideology, we are still very far behind uh, when uh, Europeans are talking about the times when they're, they, they're contemplating the government um, doing bailouts and bail-ins. Bail-ins is when the government goes into your personal bank account to bail out uh, certain uh, institutions where they bail out institutions they choose their friends to bail out which the, the taxpayer is going to pay so why people can see that as slavery on their level they see governments as the enemy <laughs> yet we as African people on the ground we are out there fighting to protect black politicians to protect black governments but we need to understand that no black government, no black politicians, no Western political system with a black government will ever do anything for Africans. So understanding that not even a black politician can free you, how much more an Arab like Muammar Gaddafi? <clears throat> and as we have seen, all his projects that everybody is praising him for, none of them were projects where these African governments had shares in Africa, Airways, or whatever, or the satellite, all this infrastructure. It's, it was all to benefit him. There's always a return on investment. There's no, there are no free lunches. That's not the gullible. So whatever Gaddafi was doing, there was going to be a return on investment, and that would have been African states indebted to him. If he, he forms this, I mean, people celebrate the central bank. A central, it, it means they don't understand economics. You cannot celebrate a central bank because a central bank is owned by a few private people. It means they control the money supply and therefore can control the, the economy. So, so, so yeah, um, I, I, I hope we, uh, we 
uh, I'm glad we had this discussion. And uh, let's spread the word. I mean, let's spread enough word to really get the black child to see Mama Gaddafi as the savior of Africa. Uh, Africa doesn't need saviors, uh, even black saviors. Uh, worse, we don't need saviors from a settler bloodline who still control the land that the ancestors stole. So with that being said, I'd like to thank everybody for, for your ears and mouths in contributing to this discussion. I will be posting the recording on YouTube and let's share the word. Peace and power. Chovicho.